my god, the time has come, the wooting, the wooting, yeah! Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. If you've been active in the Osu community for the past couple months, you've surely heard of the wooting keyboard. It all started with this tweet. PSA, speed players are trying to hide from you that they are utilizing the rapid trigger function on the wooting 2 to achieve better plays. Obviously a bit of tongue in cheek cause Mr. Apollo really likes to fool around, but the tweet itself does bring attention to a real feature of a real product, and since it got so much traction thanks to Sypho, I've started seeing the name Wooting pop up left and right. I've received comments, DMs, messages on stream urging me to try this keyboard, and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it worth it? Let's get into it. And there it is, there's the box right there. Very clean and simple, on the back it says take control, so we shall do that. Opening up the box we have a postcard from Wooting which is a very nice touch, a yellow strap that says take control, you can assemble it on the left side of the keyboard case as shown in the box here, and of course there's the keyboard itself with a plastic dust cover. Lifting this part up we have a black and yellow braided USB type C cable along with a little bag containing some screws for the strap, a keycap puller and two extra switches. The keyboard itself looks quite slick, it's a 60% so very compact, doesn't take a whole lot of space. The case is plastic but it's good plastic, quite sturdy with absolutely no flex. In the back we have 4 rubber feet, they're not adjustable but as you can see from the side view the keyboard is angled so there's really no problems typing though the USB port is all the way to the left which is no problem for me personally, but it could be a bit awkward to some, perhaps would have been better to see it in the center. While this keyboard is obviously marketed towards gamers, there are a few features that may pique the interest of keyboard enthusiasts as well. For one, differently than most gaming keyboards, you can actually mod this. If you take out the screws you can lift the aluminum plate and PCB to swap the case, it's compatible with any 60% case including the more mainstream ones. In fact, you can go on Twitter and see many people who changed both their case and keycaps, making the Wooting a gaming keyboard disguised as a costume build. The keycaps are shined through double shot PBT, but they're actually quite grippy and grainy. I like that cause having some texture usually means slightly higher quality material. On top of that, I was pleasantly surprised with the stabilizers. They are pre-lubed and they don't sound bad at all. Let's hear it. I'll be honest, as good as the stabilizers are, I really don't like the sound signature of the board itself. Even though the original case is filled with foam and there's even an extra layer in between the plate and PCB, it still manages to sound hollow and kind of rough on the ears. But then again, this is probably cause I'm used to my beautiful costume keyboard, and if you buy this, it's definitely not for typing anyway, so what's the catch? What makes this keyboard so special yet so controversial? That will be the switches. Lecker switches are made in collaboration with Gateron, they're exclusive to Wooting and they're not the mechanical switches you're likely used to. They do have a 40 gram spring and are linear, but unlike Cherry, Gateron or HyperX, they have no pins to bend or go their leaf inside, cause they're powered by Hall Effect magnetic sensors and have a fully customizable actuation point. What this means is you can essentially decide when the switch activates. For example, an HyperX red switch has an actuation point of 1.8 mm, meaning you have to press the key down till you reach that amount for the key press to start registering. On the Wooting, you can go from a maximum of 4 mm all the way to 0.1 mm, where the key activates by barely pressing the key. Now I know what you're thinking. Spaza you absolute buffoon, you clown with a red nose. Us viewers have been begging you on our knees to review the Apex Pro because it has the same interchangeable actuation point feature. How is this any different? 
Well, first of all, the newest Apex Pro goes from 0.2 mm to 3.8 as opposed to 0.1 to 4, but more importantly, the Steel Series Omnipoint switches do not allow analog movement like the Lacquer switches do, where you can basically use your wooting like an actual game controller, which simplifies movement in certain games. On top of that, the Apex Pro simply doesn't offer as many features for the price. You know it's bad when the main marketing revolves around double shot PBT keycaps, flip up feet and uh, detachable USB cable. Wow, uh, holy shit, these features are unheard of. Plus they got an aluminum plate just like every other keyboard on the market. Insane, truly remarkable. Now, the main feature of the Wooting that's the most unique and appealing to OSU players is the one mentioned by Apollo in his tweet, Rapid Trigger. Rapid Trigger is a very cool feature that's quite hard to put into words, so I'll try to showcase it. As we saw before, on a regular switch you need to reach the actuation point in order for the input to register. Problem is, if you want to repeat the key press, you also need to surpass a fixed reset point. For example, if you're near the point of bottoming out and you try pressing the key again, the input won't register since you haven't reached the reset point yet. With Rapid Trigger enabled, you can dynamically change the activation and deactivation point, meaning your keys will activate when you press them and deactivate when you let go. This means you can repeat a key press mid-motion without needing to surpass a fixed reset point. Before I explain what all that means in OSU, I need to make a very important premise. As you guys know, I've tried a ton of keyboards over the years. Some good, some bad, pre-built, modded, costume, and I'm very familiar with the lengths brands will go to try and sell their overpriced boards with buzzwords like innovation, groundbreaking, the fastest ever. When I first heard of the Wooting, not only did I not fall for the hype, I was also quite skeptical. I've used mine extensively for more than a month just so I could make this review fair and square and not get blinded by any potential placebo effect. I can say with a very high degree of confidence, this keyboard is really, really good and different from anything I've ever tried before. With Rapid Trigger, you can get away with meshing a lot more, since you don't need to surpass the reset point for your inputs to be registered as full key presses. Now, tapping isn't exactly my strongest suit, however, in most DTA maps, especially longer ones, you're always going to have not only jumps, but also other patterns that can definitely trip you up, even more so as a full alt player. I'm talking triples in between jumps, bursts and stream spikes. With this keyboard I sort of stopped worrying about them, cause even if I perhaps lose control for a moment, I can get away with a couple hundreds instead of chain missing and ruining an entire play. Having that knowledge definitely gives you a slight boost in confidence and perhaps allows you to focus more on reading the map instead of overthinking or anticipating whichever pattern is coming your way. In the beginning you're probably going to slider break a lot since the input drops as soon as you stop holding down, but once you play around with your settings and find something that works for you, everything clicks and you're in that sweet spot. If I, a rusty old man who barely plays the game, can one miss a bunch of 8 stars, beat my PB on a bunch of maps, and even gain PP for the first time in 300 years, I have no doubt the Wooting will do wonders in the hands of a good player. Or would it? You gotta remember, when it comes to peripherals, nothing is ever really objective, and people are going to have different opinions. Kilohertz, one of the best speed and stamina players in the game, who I'm sure you all know, made a Wooting review where he essentially stated that the keyboard is not worth it and it really didn't do much for him. That's a fair perspective to have, though I honestly feel that because his tapping technique is so f***ing consistent and well refined, he wouldn't really gain as big an advantage from a feature like Rapid Trigger compared to the average person. That's not to say Kilohertz is wrong of course, it just goes to show that the keyboard is not necessarily for everyone. In fact, let's bust a couple myths. Myth number one, the Wooting makes speed easier. I don't know how this rumor spread exactly, I guess it's a combination of Apollo's tweet plus Sypho's recent pop-off. That could not be further from the truth. If you're a good speed player already, then yeah, the Wooting can give you a very slight boost, but if you're some 5 digit who claims they can stream 280 BPM when in reality all you do is smash the shit out of your keyboard and double tap Isogu, 
Rapid Trigger is not going to help you. And let me tell you, it's not going to make you go from 270 to 330, believe that. Myth number 2. Rapid Trigger removes finger lock. Yes and no. Surely with Rapid Trigger you can get away with finger locking a lot more, but you need to already be capable of streaming the BPM you're trying to play in the first place. It also highly depends on how fast you can recover from the finger lock. If it's a small one, you may get a couple hundreds, if it's a terrible one, you may still miss. Myth number 3. The Wooting keyboards turn bad technique and bad tapping into perfect streaming. As you may be able to guess at this point, that's not really the case. If you're a guy who just goes ham fucking monkey mode on your keyboard, Rapid Trigger will not turn that into proper streaming. If anything, you're just going to develop bad habits and potentially hinder your improvement in the future. So be careful. Since we're talking about Osu, I wanna touch on the other game modes for a moment. Do keep in mind my experience ranges from quite limited to practically non-existent. So please, if you're a good player in any of those modes, feel free to correct me in the comments. Taiko. I honestly feel like you wouldn't really gain an advantage in Taiko, mostly because of how tapping works. In Osu standard, especially when streaming, you're always trying to keep your fingers as close to the keys as possible, whereas in Taiko, tapping is much more explosive, so I really don't see how a feature like Rapid Trigger could really help you out. Mania. I feel that in Mania, the wooting could be quite helpful for many different patterns, most notably, Vibros. Vibro is a pattern where you essentially have to, well, vibrate on your keys, and in my mind, Rapid Trigger in combination with a very low actuation point could be very useful to increase the BPM you can vibro, or perhaps get away with spamming a bit more. Catch the beat. I have absolutely zero experience here, however, it's a game mode that entirely relies on holding down and releasing keys. So with analog switches and especially rapid trigger, I don't see how this couldn't make certain movements and patterns a bit easier, since you'd be able to do them faster. Overall, I have nothing but good things to say about this keyboard. It's not magic, it's not cheating, but goddamn is it good. The funny part is, I'm really just scratching the surface here. I'm sorry to disappoint, but I'm not a real gamer. I don't really play any other video games in my spare time, so I can't speak on the other features of this keyboard. The thing is though, they are here. Analog controls, dynamic keystrokes, mod tab, toggle key, tachyon mode which brings your keyboard to minimum latency. There are so many things to touch on that can offer so many benefits in so many different games. I honestly recommend checking more wooting reviews to get the idea. I know this will sound like a stereotypical sentence, and I assure you, I wasn't paid for this review, but I genuinely believe this is the absolute best gaming keyboard money can buy. Yes, 200 euros may sound like a lot, but given the current state of the gaming keyboard market, for what it offers, it's more than fair. The Wooting is unfortunately not in stock as of now, you can pre-order it on their website and it's expected to ship early 2023, which may sound like a long time, but, well, as someone who's into costume keyboards, let me tell you, you got off easy. Please never buy GMK keycaps, guys. You'll have to wait a year and a half and still not have them delivered to you, goddammit. One last thing. Please, 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 please do not use the wooting as copium. When you miss, don't think to yourself, man, if I had the wooting, man, I would totally have C, man, because that is likely not the case. Stop blaming your peripherals, don't buy this keyboard on a whim because you think it's magic, because you don't need the wooting to get good. Any keyboard, any keypad will do. As long as it's not Razer. Woo, baby! <laughs> Sorry guys, I had to make that joke. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. I leave a link to the wooting Discord server where you can join their community and keep up with the updates, as well as the link for the keyboard itself. Anyway, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, or else you'll become as rusty as me. <laughs> Have a good one, guys.